You might have watched my first settings video where I go over the best graphics to get the best FPS and also some other tips that increase your visibility in the actual game. But today I'm going to be going over other settings including sensitivity for both keyboard and mouse and controller, different settings that you should be doing for each of these to help you get the best aim and the best experience possible on Black Ops Cold War. Hey guys, what is going on? It is your boy Jay King, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys part two of this series of the best settings on Black Ops Cold War. In the first video, I go over the best graphic settings, but today we're going to be focusing on other settings, mostly on the sensitivity for both keyboard and mouse and controller and all the different settings you should have to get the best possible experience on Black Ops Cold War. So hopefully you'll be walking away from this video knowing where you should start and finding your perfect sensitivity and the different settings that go along with it. Now, before we get started today, you guys know the drill. We do have a shout Shout out for MadDabber907. Go give him a follow. His link will be down in the description below. If you want to shout out your stuff, all you have to do is head over to my stream, JKing underscore official on Twitch. Get 1,000 channel points and redeem the shout out reward in the actual channel point section. And you'll be in next week's video yourself, as well as your link down in the description below. Also, if this video has helped you at all, consider leaving a like and a subscription. Ring that bell for more content. I post a live commentary every Monday and a tutorial video every Friday. So don't miss out. So without further ado, let's hop in into it so hop you right into it we're on the keyboard and mouse section of the settings uh, we'll get the controller after this uh, but this is what I use. I use a 9.7 uh, hip fire sensitivity with 400 DPI. And I also use 8.7 on both low and high zoom ADS sensitivity. What this is going to do is it's going to lower my ADS sensitivity. Uh, so, you know, I can have that good accuracy while I'm ADS in. Uh, but also have a little bit higher hip fire sensitivity. So I can move around to targets, move around the map a little bit quicker. Get onto those targets quicker. This is a good strategy to have. Again, there's no right or wrong sensitivity in this game. Uh, but having a slightly higher hip fire sensitivity so you can uh, get on the targets quicker is going to be good. And then lowering that ADS sensitivity so you can have that accuracy uh, both at range and in close. I use instant ADS sensitivity timing. Uh, this is just because I know when I hit my right mouse button, I know I'm going to have a certain sensitivity. I know when that's going to take into effect. So on these two settings, you know, it might be a little bit iffy on when that sensitivity is actually going to come in. Uh, so this is the best for muscle memory. If you're wondering how to transfer your sensitivity from other games, I recommend mousesensitivity.com. There is a premium feature for some games, actually a lot of games. So you might not be able to do it just on a free thing. But it's only three bucks a month. And if you just pay that three bucks and then use all of the things, you go through all your games, convert your sensitivities. You can pretty much get all your sensitivities down just in one month and then cancel your subscription, take pictures, write it down, you know, whatever. I do recommend if you do that, go by view speed and not 360 distance. The reason for that is if you go by 360 uh, you know, measurements. If you have a different field of view, and this is especially going to come into effect when you go into ADS sensitivities across games, you're going to have different field of view when you actually aim in. Your sensitivity is actually going to be slightly different. So I got to take into account your field of view, which is actually an extremely important part when it comes to muscle memory for aiming. So sort by view speed. It's going to pretty much transfer your sensitivity across every single field of view. Um, and you're pretty much going to get that muscle memory for each and every zoom distance in each and every game. So if you do that, make sure you go by view speed. I do recommend vertical sensitivity to keep at one. So you're not having a different vertical sensitivity than your horizontal one. This is actually a pretty important part and one that I'm really, really happy that I found. Uh, basically, you want to have relative and 1.24. The reason for this, this setting actually makes it to where each and every zoom level that you have in this game. So different sites have different zoom levels. They might have two times, they might have three times, and you know, snipers are gonna have like six or seven times, something like that. Don't wanna have different sensitivities for each and every zoom level. That's gonna mess with your muscle memory and it's gonna make it harder for you to go between guns. This 1.24 setting basically makes it to where each and every zoom level in this game has a similar view speed. It's actually the exact same view speed. So basically I'm gonna be using the same sensitivity on each and every zoom level in this game. This is really, really helpful for muscle memory and I do recommend you guys use this. Keep both of these on zero disabled. Uh, this pretty much just messes with muscle memory. There's no reason to have mass acceleration on at all. Mouse smoothing also does the same thing. These all just mess with muscle memory. You wanna have the most accurate mouse movements to help with that muscle memory and to train your aim. As far as gameplay, just sort of go through here and you know, what are you comfortable with? Are you comfortable with toggling crouch or holding crouch? Maybe you play CSGO and you hold crouch on that game. You might want to transfer that into here. Uh, so just sort of go through each and every thing. Um, obviously the hold slash toggle ADS, that's pretty important. You know, it just comes down to personal preference. Really nothing here um, that is going to be right or wrong. As far as keybinds, I would recommend getting a similar keybind setup for each and every game. 
Uh, mine's a little bit different. I use reload for my middle mouse button, and then I use R for switching weapons. This just makes it, I don't like using one to two to switch weapons. I make, I feel like that's hard to like YY around the map. This is pretty much a similar keybind that I'm going to, you know, transfer across games, you know, to the best of my abilities. And it just helps with that muscle memory. So, you know, okay, I'm going to hit reload with this button. I'm going to use equipment with this button. And it's just going to help you play better. As far as audio, um, nothing much really here. I do recommend bass boost, but there's different things that you could try out. Bass boost, I feel like, just helps bring out those walking sounds a lot better from the enemies. Um, that is sort of in the lower range. So if you bass boost that up, you might be hearing people uh, where you normally wouldn't hear them. Turn off hit markers if you want. I kind of just like having that, you know, validation that I'm actually hitting the target. It helps knowing when that enemy is going to die so you know I don't turn away at the last second and they're one shot. And you can mess with interface and stuff. If you don't want to see something on the map, you feel like it's, you know, obstructing you, you know, you can just turn it off if you would like. I do recommend turning a lot of these on. It's pretty unintrusive. You can see it at the top left here. Um, it just helps you, okay, what is my FPS? Is my GPU overheating or melting or something like that? It just helps you keep in touch with how your PC is performing, see if any problems are occurring. So before we move on to the controller settings, if this video has helped you at all, consider leaving a like and a subscription. Ring that bell for more content. I am a variety streamer over at Twitch, shaking underscore official. I stream mainly Cold War and other Call of Duties. I also stream other games like Clash Royale and Valorant. So if you want to come by a stream sometime, that would be amazing. Also, a quick shout out. Thank you for all the support on the channel. The support has been insane. I do I do appreciate each and every one of you showing love, dropping likes, just watching the videos. It's insane, and I do appreciate each and every one of you. So without further ado, let's get back into it. So controller settings, again, there's really nothing that is going to be like the set sensitivity that you want to be using. I definitely recommend don't go below four. Um, having this going below four is really not necessary anymore. This is because they have introduced the ADS sensitivity for a controller as well. That's been in pretty much a lot of the call of duties here recently basically what that means you could bump up your hip fire sensitivity so you're able to move turn around this is especially helpful with the controller uh because you know doing those like 180 turns 90 degree turns are going to be a little bit slower than mouse and keyboard uh, so having this sort of mobility to snap onto targets is really helpful and you're not going to be sacrificing any of your ads uh accuracy uh, because you're going to be able to lower this so just mess around you know maybe look at some pros what they use i do recommend if you don't have any paddles or bumpers on your controller and you're just playing with a standard controller try out bumper jumper tactical basically what this means you're gonna be able to jump and drop shot without taking your finger off the right stick this is huge for you know jump shotting around the corners this is huge just to be a good player so if you don't have any bumpers or uh, paddles or you don't play claw, uh, I would try out this one. You're going to be able to do both of those at the same time. Uh, it does take a little bit to get used to because you actually shoot with your middle finger on your left hand, uh, which is a little bit weird to get used to. But I do recommend trying to get that incorporated into your muscle memory. It's going to make you a better player. You can mess with any of these. If you want to shoot with the bumpers, uh, that's fine. Some people say that is quicker and better for your reaction time uh, than pulling down that like trigger on the actual controller that might add a little bit of input lag to your game uh, so you can mess with that if you would like controller vibration i definitely recommend turn that off uh, there's real no real need to have it uh, obviously it sort of feels nice you know to get that feedback from your shooting uh, but there's really nothing that's going to help you in that as far as aim assist a lot of people are using standard i'm not entirely sure like what the difference is between each and every one but if you look at a lot of the pros are going to be using standard obviously have aim assist on that's like obviously the whole issue with controller um, aim assist in the game is really really strong if you watch some of the kill cams uh, you're going to see that aim assist track you as you like jump across the corner uh, so definitely have that on. Uh, probably the most important thing when it comes to sensitivity on controller is your minimum threshold uh, when it comes to, you know, your different sticks. You basically want to turn the minimum threshold down as far as you can when you're not getting stick drift. So I recommend jumping into a custom match, set the time limit on, you know, infinity, um, and basically try to turn these down, mess with these settings, and try to find where the minimum threshold is to where you don't get stick drift. I believe that pretty much every controller is going to have a little bit of stick drift. So if you turn it down to zero, you're probably going to have stick drift and you don't want that. So basically find the smallest amount of minimum threshold that you have before you get stick drift. This is going to help your reactivity and reaction time. Basically, it's going to make your input snappier. You're pretty much just going to have your inputs immediately inputted on the screen. It's going to help with your aim, especially. It's also going to help with your movement because it doesn't have your left stick. There is auto sprint if you would like. I don't think this is really necessary or helpful at all. Uh, I don't really see the benefits to it, but if you would like to, you can do that. There's also sprint cancels reload. I don't recommend this. I do believe this hurts your mobility. 
uh, to not be able to run while you're reloading. But some people do have that muscle memory from older Call of Duties where you can actually cancel your reload from sprinting. So if you do have that, you could turn that on if you would like. But if you don't have that muscle memory at all, uh, just keep this disabled. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what sensitivity you guys use down in the comment section below if you see this. I do appreciate you for watching to the end. You are an absolute goat. And I will see you guys in the next one. Ask you who would listen. Someone had to say it, but we didn't choose the mission. We just had to take it, man. I try to do it different. And that's not what I see in you. I'll print out my lyrics if you really want to read them.